Hello, we are back on Chapter 8, Lesson 3. Essential question, how can different fractions name the same amount? And here's where we really get into modeling equivalent fractions. So the other lessons are building up to this because we really have to understand the parts in order to be able to do this successfully. Okay, the top number on a fraction is the numerator. The bottom number on a fraction is the denominator. Fractions that represent the same part of a number or a whole are equivalent fractions. So our first example is generate two fractions that are equivalent to one-third. And they've given us a model here. They modeled a one-third tile at the top and then find a fraction that is equivalent to that. And you can see here they've got one-sixth tiles. And when they place two of the one-sixth tiles, the lines on both sides measure up. So this is equal in size to this. And they also found the twelfth tiles. And by lining them up, they found that by placing four one-twelfth tiles, they will equal one-third. But I want to show you another way. So I've made in just a Word document a bunch of tables. And this will open up. Okay, so here's the table I created in my Word document. I'm sure it's the same for whatever the Mac equivalent page is. And I just made one whole and a half. And it's just a um, fractions table on one page. The only difference between mine and the ones that you're going to find if you do a Google search is that the ones in the Google search will have one half and one half and one third, one third, one third. But I like to show one third, two thirds, three thirds to make clear. If you just go down the end, you can see exactly one whole is two halves, three halves, three thirds, four fourths, etc. So if all I need to do is line up this, and I just made a line using my app, the program, and all I have to do is slide this line that I've made over to the edge of one third and then I just look down I see that on my fourth there's a line here there's a fraction here and one here so there's no there's no fourth fraction that is equal to one third if I go down my two sixth or my sixth I see that two sixth is lined up right here and that does line up with my one third so I can tell that two sixth is one that is equal to one third. I'll just highlight those. Now my eighths, one eighth ends here and the other ends here. So that is not going to be an equivalent. There's not an equivalent eighth to one third. Three ninths is, that ends right here, and that is in line with my line. So we've already found more than, or we found the same number as the book has. And then tenths, I can see one tenth ends here and the other one ends here, so there's nothing in line. But I can see that the twelfth ends here, and four twelfths will be equivalent to one third. So now we found more than the book did. One third, two sixths, three ninths, and four twelfths. And you can either do this digitally at home, or you can print out a fraction chart from the internet and um, use a ruler and just line up your ruler straight up and down and then see which um, fractions line up with the edge of your ruler to get um, the same as what I've done here by using this this line on my computer. And there's an easy way to show you that those lines do in fact all add up. Okay, I'm going to switch back to the um, book page and they've got their 1 6th and 1 12th. So one third, two six, ooh, woo, and four twelfths. If I can fit it in that little tiny box with my horrible computer writing, one third, two six, and four twelfths are equivalent fractions. Now we're doing the same thing, but we're using a number line which is similar to the um, fraction bars that I made in my Word document. Um, this is also similar to a ruler. So if you have a ruler that is um, has inches, it doesn't so so much work for the centimeters because the lines are so small. But it does kind of if you have an inches uh, ruler at home, you can see the divisions. And usually a ruler will have longer lines for the fourths, a really long line for the half, and longer lines for the fourths, and then smaller lines all the way to twelfths sometimes. Um, so you can use a ruler 
where you can try and draw these number lines. It just gets hard to keep all these sections equal when you're looking at twelfths. But um, they've already given us this one, so we can use their model. The first number line is divided into fourths. Plot one fourth on the number line. So here we've got zero. We've got one, two, three, four sections. So this first line is going to be one fourth my wonderful computer writing. Plot this fraction on the number line. The third number line is divided into twelfths. Oh, okay, sorry, I skipped a step. The second number line is divided into eighths. Okay, so we've got one eighth. What would be equivalent? The second line, which would be, I'm going to try and write a little bit better for you. Not probably going to be successful. So two eighths, what we're saying is that two eighths and the one fourth are going to line up. Now we're also going to figure out what lines up on the twelfths. Let's see, divide into twelfths, yeah. Okay, so here's their zero. That's not going to count as one, that's zero. One, two, three. So now I've got three twelfths. And you can see that those all line up at the same point on um, on the fraction on the um, number line that they've given us. And if you're using um, the number chart and a ruler or uh, the digital the line, I can just slide my line over. And it's nice if I don't actually put it over, just right next to. I think we can see it better. Um, so there's one fourth. We can see. There's no sixth, but two eighths and three twelfths are in line, and they are equivalent fractions to one fourth. So if you have this, or you can print one, this is the best. Uh, I find it the best way to um, make sure that they're equivalent. So going back to our problem, so two fractions that are equivalent to one fourth are two eighths and three twelfths. Okay. The table shows some equivalent fractions. Study the table. Describe the pattern between the numerators and denominators of two equivalent fractions. So looking at these, you can see that going across we've got equivalent fractions. So here's some equivalent fractions to one-third, and here's some that are equivalent to one-fourth. So see if you can notice a pattern in the numerator and denominator when looking at um, the simplest form, which is what one third or one fourth, one fourth and one third of the simplest form of the all these fractions. See if you notice some commonality there that's happening, and that'll give you a pattern, uh, a strategy for future math that we're going to do. So this is a good one to work on. Okay, so I went to the word problems, and I just wanted to set you up a little bit with this one. There were ten baked goods in a basket. Four of them were sold. Write a fraction to show the part of the baked goods that were not sold. So I'm guessing people are going to want to just write a simple subtraction equation, but because this is fractions, I want to show you the way to make this into a fraction subtraction equation. So let me get it set up. So the best way to show this as a fraction is 10 tenths, which is the total number of baked goods that were made, would be our whole. And then 4 tenths of them were sold. So what um, the fraction of baked goods that were not sold would be your answer. So the fraction here, baked goods were not sold. This would be the part that you would copy to write your sentence answer. Okay, so pay attention to that. And 16 and 17 just has the fractions and you're finding an equivalent. So using your number line or your number chart or fraction bars to find the equivalent fractions for the ones that are given to you in the word problem. Okay, now we're looking at practice. You, Daria used fraction tiles to show that three-fifths if it is equivalent to six-tenths. Compare the number and size of fraction tiles needed to model each fraction. So this one is really going to need the fraction tiles in order to um, complete that. So you'll want to take those out of your uh, math kit. Now if we've got two here, what if we've got two somethings, 
it's going to be equivalent to some sixths. So you're going to have to figure out what the equivalent fraction here is given these numbers that they've told you. And then write a real world example of equivalent fractions. You probably need more room, so you're going to have to write on the line and then underneath the line. And you've got space at the bottom of the page. So make sure you're writing a, a word problem to answer this question. And go to it.